welcome back to our last day of hope. I know it's, uh, it's sad that we're here at the last day, but we've got another great talk lined up for you right now. The talk is using security automation to organize your cybersecurity threat intelligence knowledge. It will outline how the CTI, open CTI platform can be deployed, scaled for high availability using cloud native strategies and utilized by strategic and technical cyber threat analysts at any seniority level. So we have a matrix chat thread for this talk. If you have questions, especially for the virtual audience, go ahead and enter it into the matrix chat. And when we get to the QA section of this talk, we'll uh, try and get your questions answered. We also will have a QA section. There's a microphone in back. So when we get to the QA section, please, audience members, come back and queue up, and we'll, we'll queue you up for the speaker. So with that, let's introduce Andrew Q for his talk. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, so right off the bat, opinions are my own and not the view of my employer and should never be taken seriously. Um, my name is Andrew Koo. Um, I'm here because I love to pre uh, give, uh, give presentations. Or if you speak minion, bello. So about my, a few things about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Queens, not too far from, from St. John's University. Um, I'm currently a platform engineer um, for the city of New York. Um, some of the things that I do um, day to day um, involve uh, Kubernetes, DevSecOps, infrastructure as a code, um, site, reliability, site reliability engineering, um, and incident response. Um, and this is my um, second hope um, in real life. So um, let's, let's identify the problem. Um, cyber threat intelligence tooling is expensive. The licenses and subscriptions are not cheap. Um, let's define CTI. So what is, counter, what is cyber threat intelligence? CrowdStrike defines it as, in a very loose term, the collecting of, possessing of, the, anal the analyzing of, a threat actor's motives, targets, and attack behaviors to make decisions using good judgments. Gardner um, calls it hard facts backed by evidence about existing or emerging menaces or hazards to, um, to assets. So whether um, it be like IT computer security IT assets, or it could be OTICS assets as well. So in short, um, to summarize the two definitions together very loosely, um, uh, cyber threat intelligence is in which threat actors are tracked by what they want, what they do, uh, what they have done, and based st uh, strictly on facts. So uh, like I had in the first slide, um, or the first um, the slide in the, in the, uh, in the section, um, we have too many vendors, we have too many feeds. Um, some of these names are maybe household friendly um, that you've seen before, Anomaly, ThreatStream, ThreatConnect, Threat Intelligence Platform, Record of Future is a, is a, is a big name in, in cyber threat intelligence. Um, and we have Palo Alto, um, relatively new to the space, I, um, I'd, um, I'd say they're you know, maybe less than a year in, um, and they integrated uh, a threat intelligence module in their um, SOAR platform called XSOR, Cortex XSOR. Um, and you know, these, br these big brand names used um, in the enterprise, um, they'll charge an arm and leg um, to use their systems. Not only do you need, um, not only for um, cyber threat intelligence do you need a platform to you know aggregate all your data. You also need, an, uh, you also need subscriptions and feeds, you know, um, uh, upstream. So um, here are a few that you might, you know, you may also know, like CrowdStrike intelligence and, and indicators. Record a future has wonderful streams and threat feeds. Uh, MSI SAC, FSI SAC, if you're into like the government space, financial services space. Um, Mandiant, bought by Google, and previously known as, um, or separated from FireEye. Uh, Palo Alto's Unit 42 uh, Threat Research Group has, uh, has uh, good threat feeds. Um, and URL House, and um, you know, there may be others. And each of these, um, each of these feeds, each of these vendors, whether or not who you pick, if you want like you know high fidelity data and whatnot, um, you know these feeds cost you know thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars um, in order to be a subscriber of. And so, um, knowledge is power. Power is knowledge. You can't you can't run you can't do you know cyber threat intelligence if you don't have uh, if you don't have the knowledge, and you can't you can't. Uh, conduct cyber threat intelligence if you don't have the power. So let's identify the solution, right? Enterprise cyber threat intelligence is way too expensive. 
So let's make it, let's make it cheaper. Enterprise cyber threat intelligence doesn't have to be expensive. So the, the, main, to the main topic that I'm going to speak about today um, is to introduce you guys to um, OpenCTI. OpenCTI is an open source, free to use um, uh, cyber threat intelligence platform you can find on GitHub. Um, it's created by these lovely individuals um, outside of, um, located in France, Paris. Um, uh, uh, they operate under the, um, the, uh, the nonprofit organization called Lutix, um, and they've been working on this product for about two to three years. Um, and um, they've just been making huge um, groundbreaking, groundbreaking uh, waves in this space in order to make cyber threat intelligence um, you know, open to all, free to use to all, without the uh, limitations of like cost or anything. So about OpenCTI. It's an open source comprehensive platform that allows organizations to manage, structure, store, organize, and visualize their cyber threat intelligence knowledge and observables. It uses a modern tech stack. Um, front end is written in React and Node. Uh, uses back end Python, uses GraphQL for, um, for its API. Um, its database, you can use Elasticsearch or OpenSearch if you'd like. Um, it uses uh, RabbitMQ for its messaging queue to, um, uh, to designate work and tasks. Um, and it uses Redis as a cache um, for you know, non-persistent um, uh, non store, uh, storage. And um, to reiterate, it's open source, community empowered, and free. So you know, if you if there's a you know develop the developers, the Lutix, um that make the program or that make the platform, um, they have this policy where if there's a you know if there's a bug in the general release, they'll try to fix it within 24 hours. Community su community suggestions um, are welcomed. Um, if you if you use the platform and you realize that you know there there could be a like a you know great idea that, you know, that would work really well um, in the ecosystem. You could just submit like a feature request um, and, you know, they'll respond really quickly. And most importantly, it's free. So um, the, core the core functionality of the platform divides into essentially three parts. Um, the first being the ability to organize and manage your knowledge. So, you know, you as, you know, uh, an, an, info, an infosec team may have, you know, intelligence people working under you, and you know your intelligence team will have to, you know, save their work, do their work, conduct their research, be able to, you know, um, deliver deliverables in, in, you know, one sense or another. Uh, the platform, the second core functionality of the platform is to visualize and graph um, the knowledge that you accumulate. So the ability to, you know, draw p pretty pictures, make pretty relationships between, you know, um, your threat actors. You, uh, the, the threat tools that your threat actors use and the targets, the targeted entities that your threat actors um, target. Uh, and the third functionality is to aggregate what you know, what others know, and what you want to share to others. So the ability to essentially, you know, pull upstream from CrowdStrike, from Recorded Future, from Mandiant, from Palo Alto, and be able to, um, you know, save it, um, you know, on your premise, um, and, have also, and also have the ability, you know, to share the data that you collect, harvest, ingest, analyze, uh, validate um, to uh, downstream clients, whether it be other um, infosec teams within your organi organizations, whether it be other infosec teams or CTI teams and other organizations or parent organizations, partner organizations, and things like that. Um, so we'll talk about the, the first core functionality, which is organizing your knowledge. Um, uh, CTI for cyber threat intelligence, you can say that you can break it down into two, two components, two schools of thought essentially, um, strategic versus uh, technical. Where um, for, strate for, for strategic CTI, right, it's mainly about knowledge about your threats, um, the threat tools that your threats use, and related entities that are targeted by your, um, by your, by your threat actors. So, um, so for your threats could come in, you know, a variety of, you know, come in a, a variety of forms, right? Whether they be like threat actors, meaning, 
um, you know, Russian FSB, Iranian military, um, Korean, Korean um, people's, the, the Korean, the KPA, um, you know, the Chinese army and, and things like that. Intrusion sets are more along the lines of like um, your APTs, your worms, your spiders, your bears, um, things like things of that nature, N not necessarily tied to, you know, an organized real world um, uh, entity. Um, and campaigns, meaning, you know, things like uh, real world events, like, you know, upri government uprisings, government elections, um, big events in nature, like solar winds, um, things like that. Threat tools. So, um, uh, strategic CTI, uh, threat tools fall under strategic CTI um, through the use of, you know, keeping track of um, the malware, which is, which are, you know, the malicious software that your threat actors are deploying, whether it be ransomware, Trojans, worms, et cetera. Um, the attack patterns, which correspond to um, your MITRE attack framework um, and things like that. Um, courses of action, which is MITRE attack, which is like, you know, uh, MITRE attack techniques and, and patterns, but without the MITRE attack, uh, you know, uh, uh, identifying schema. Um, tools, so, you know, your cobalt strikes, your metasploit, your, em your empire, your, your bloodhound, tools that your threat actors use, um, you know, in order to conduct their business. And of course, you can't forget about vulnerabilities, right? You have your, after all, your threat actors are, um, are, um, are uh, you know, using, are uh, hitting your, um, are using vulnerability, are using vulnerabilities to their advantage, um, and they're tracked by, you know, the CVEs and things like that. So targeted entities. Targeted entities falls under um, countries, cities, organizations, and individuals. Pretty self-explanatory. Usually, um, these would be the you call it the victimology, the victims of of, of attacks and of threat actors and th and um, things of that nature. Um, and so we'll move on to the technical cyber threat or um, cyber um, technical the technical component of cyber threat intelligence, which is um, I guess probably what most people would. Would, would allude to when you think about, you know, cyber threat intelligence and things like that, which is just observables, artifacts, and indicators. You know, your IPs, domains, URL, hashes, email, email addresses, um, file names, and things like that. So, um, OpenCTI, the OpenCTI platform will aggregate all your um, strategic knowledge, as well as your, as well as your technical knowledge, and kind of like, you know, put it all in a single pot and for you to draw relationships or automatically have the platform draw relationships for you in order to organize your data. But how can it be done, right? And this is where um, we, we take, you know, DevOps into the mix. How can we deploy um, uh, OpenCTI, you know, whether it be you on your home lab, for your organization, um, for your own use, for that matter. So this core ecosystem, like I mentioned before, um, you know, it uses open source tools and technologies. Well, we have Elasticsearch or OpenSearch for your um, for your persistent database. You know, everything everything gets uh, written and read into it. Um, Redis keeps track of your um, your your cache, your non persistent storage storage that you know um, that doesn't need to be saved. Um, we have uh, MinIO, um, which essentially is just like a front end for for S3 buckets. Um, but anything with like a, you know, XML, S3, XML API can work as well. So you could use Google Cloud Storage, you could use Azure. Um, we have RabbitMQ, um, you know, open source AMQP platform um, to handle events. Um, and we have a few OpenCTI components, um, which are made of um, the React front end, um, GraphQL back end, um, Python connectors, and Python workers. So um, for the last few bits, you know, everything is, um, strives to be like a microservice oriented uh, environment. But wait, how can it be scaled? How well does it scale? So yes, it can, everything that you just saw in the, in the graph, um, in the graph in the, pre in the previous slide um, could be scaled for high availability, for high availability, for example. Um, Elasticsearch, you could use a multi-node cluster, multi-regional cluster, you know, to prevent outages, you know, pop up as many replicas, primaries as you want, rollovers and things like, um, set up index rollovers, 
um, uh, uh, you know, snapshots, hot and cold, hot, warm and cold indexes in order to keep your, you know, the most frequently accessed data, um, you know, in hot and keep your, you know, less used data in cold so that you aren't, you know, using crazy amounts of resources for Elasticsearch. Redis can be also configured for high availability. High availability. You can use a multi-node multi, multi -node, uh, Redis instance. Um, that's perfectly fine. It will be resilient to you know, regional, um, regional downtime or zonal downtime if you're in the cloud. RabbitMQ, like I, sp like I said before, you could, you, know, you could also set up a multi-node cluster for RabbitMQ in the event you don't want, you know, just because your RabbitMQ goes down doesn't mean that your platform would stop, you know, would stop processing tasks and things like that. Uh, and MinIO, which you can, you know, if you have the ability to, um, uh, uh, you know, have access to an S3 bucket, whether it be like uh, AWS, GCP, or Azure, um, you'd have, you know, the, the, the cloud platforms um, word of like, you know, 99.9999% um, availability uptime, um, which translates to about like, you know, a handful of hours of downtime every year. And the OpenCTI e ecosystem itself, meaning the platform, the workers, um, the connectors, um, they're all stateless in nature. They don't hold any states. If they, if, they, if they go down, your data won't, you know, disappear. As long as you know everything's being written to Elasticsearch, as long as you're um, saving it to a persistent, a persistent disk, um, uh, you won't have to worry. Um, the OpenCTI ecosystem is essentially built off of like container technology, um, so that you know everything is um, microserviced, um, everything is partitioned. Um, you can spin up whatever you want, however you want. Um, you could configure, you know, how if you need, um, you know, a hundred front ends to service your clients. You're sure, why not? It's fine because you know the data is being um, uh, written and read and written into Elasticsearch anyways. If you need, you know, if you see a spike in um, in the demand of your of your CTI team, you know, if they need to do you know something um, resource intensive, you can spin up more workers, more consumers in order to um, get their work done um, during you know the rush. So adoption, right? Um, I talked about how to, what our, um, what the problem was, what the solution is. Um, gave you guys a little bit of, of a brief a brief introduction about the um, OpenCTI platform, um, and I also, you know, uh, described to you guys how to briefly, you know, deploy it in your home labs, um, you know, organization workspace environments and things of that nature. Let's talk about, you know, if you even if you didn't have a CTI team in your organization or you're thinking about, you know, um, spinning up a, uh, a CTI team. Um, how would you um, operationalize OpenCTI um, within your CTI teams or InfoSec teams if you don't already have a CTI team? So um, uh, this is what essentially what the platform would look like the moment, you know, from a clean slate, you essentially have nothing, right? Um, how would you, the, the, the main question would be like, you know, um, how would you, um, uh, pull, pull data from upstream, from your vendors, from your subscriptions, from your threat feeds, have it all, you know, pumped into the platform, and then have your, th um, you know, technical analysts, strategic analysts, um, you know, go on the platform and be able to, you know, conduct their work. Because at the end of the day, right, you want your platform to look something like this, where, you know, you have, you know, pretty graphs, pretty lines, um, big numbers, things to show, you know, upper management, um, you know, uh, prove, the, prove to upper management, you know, you're keeping track of, like, you know, you know, thousands of threat actors, th thousands of threats, um, and you know, have a running database of like all the tools that um, that that you've seen, that you know, that your um, partners know, and, and things of that nature. So, um, you can't have a home without any furniture, right? You can have a, a bare metal shell, um, but if you don't have your, you don't, if you, you don't have like connectors or enrichment or um, ingestion, um, you won't be able to. Um, function really. Um, so a few injection, injection connectors break into um, three parts, which are internal enrichment, internal import, external import. So internal enrichment essentially just means that you know you have a IP or a domain or a URL. You're unsure, you know, you're unsure if it's like benign or malicious or not. Yeah, you can you know go on VirusTotal. You can type it in whatever. 
Um, but you know, we, we, we want to try to like automate the process. So like if the IP, if the URL, if the domain is already on your platform, you know, from somewhere, whether it be like, you know, uploaded um, from somewhere um, or, you know, manually put in, um, you'd be able to, you know, it, uh, run like a virus, like a virus total query lookup. You'd be able to query um, any, any service that you have, that you have an API key for, for the most part, you know, to learn about your, more about your entity. We have internal imports, um, which means that, you know, in the event, um, uh, your team is not as, as super technical, like the way that you guys receive information is through like newsletters or like email or something like that, or maybe you have like PDFs or documents that people send you about threat reports and things like that. Internal import just means that you can take, you know, um, uh, knowledge and reports um, manually and you can upload them onto the platform um, for the platform to like, you know, ingest, break down, and parse. Um, we have the external imports. Um, which, uh, as it implies, will communicate upstream, you know, to your vendors. Um, you know, it will constantly pull um, for, uh, pull your vendors like threat feeds and subscriptions in order for you to get the most recent indicators, the most recent um, uh, uh, threat actors and relationships and how, um, and even reports as well. And for e-gestion, um, because you know you have, you know, OpenCTI shouldn't be your shouldn't be the you know last station of the of the routes in which your data flows from upstream to downstream. OpenCTI could be in the middle ground where um, other um, other instances, other clients. It doesn't have to be OpenCTI. You can use you know any of the other vendor, um, you know, vendor paid paid programs um, products to con to hook into OpenCTI. OpenCTI has like a cool functionality where you can essentially just like spin up like a taxi, you know, uh, threat feed and be able to like whatever whatever data that matches whatever filter um, that hits your platform, you can just like ship it off, you know, export it, you know, put it in your put it in the feed um, to be consumed downstream. So um, this this um, this diagram here just kind of breaks it down even further, where um, starting with on the left side, we have the external input connectors. So these are the connectors that will listen from upstream. So if you need, you know, an updated, you know, uh, you know, they put up, they put out like a new MITRE attack technique and you need, you know, you need, your, you need your platform to like run the updates, your platform will automatically be able to pull the MITRE attack techniques, um, uh, the CSVs, the JSONs, you know, hosted by MITRE. Um, from their GitHub, you know, every day or something, so you get the most up-to-date information. If you need, like, um, you know, whatever taxi servers that you have subscriptions to, whatever taxi servers that um, that you that you pull information out of currently, you can hook that into as well as an external input connector. Um, if you need an uh, updated list, a running list of like your CVEs, um, you know, CV 2022, whatever. Um, uh, you can also hook that in, into the into the platform so that your platform gets updated vulnerabilities and knowledge about them. We have on the very top we have the internal import file connector, um, which essentially allows you to what I just described before the ability to import um, your PDFs that you receive from you know partners over email or stuff like that. You could receive you know the the you know you could turn the latest like bleeping computer article or something and ingest that into the platform if it is uh, relevant to you um, and it'll be able to parse out your your PDFs into sticks to JSON um, it'll be able to parse out your CSVs into sticks to JSON in order for it to be ingested by the platform um, right underneath we have the internal enrichment connector. Um, and essentially, it just you know it, it calls out to whatever vendor solutions that you have, whether you have like a you know virus total API key or something, or if you have like a you know Palo Alto API, Palo Alto Autofocus Wildfire API or or, or something, um, and be able to you know uh, ask your vendor you know what do you know about this IOC, and they'll come back to you with all sorts of data, and for that you can you know uh, with a click of a button you'd be able to like save all that information onto OpenCTI. On the right side we have the um, Internal export connector, um, which just parses, which just parses like you know CSVs and um, uh, PDFs uh, into you know sticks to friendly JSON. And of course, you know if you have an in, an in-house like dev team, you know um, 
to 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 aid your um you know to assist your 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 CTI team, your in-person dev team would be able to you know write any custom code, write any custom configurations to hook into your like firewalls, to hook into your SOAR, your SIMs, um in order to you know uh, fetch whatever data your SOAR and SIMs are you know whatever is like uh, sitting on there and be able to like, you know, respond back and forth like, hey, like, you know, the SIM found something, let's look it up on OpenCTI, OpenCTI. If, open if your OpenCTI platform doesn't know about it, you can just, you know, write a connector. You could constantly pull your, um, you know, your aggregators from elsewhere um, about like new entities, IOCs, threats, and things like that. So external import, open the floodgates essentially, you know, You'll get a ton of data from threat feeds um, from upstream, you know, hundreds of thousands of indicators every hour, depending on, you know, um, what, what you're tapping into. And you have to, you know, you don't want your, your, your CTI team to go through each indicator, figure out, you know, what is useful, what isn't useful. You want to make sure that, you know, the indicators, they stay fresh, they aren't stale. You know, they're not, they're not very useful if they, if they um, have come in, like, you know, a year ago. Um, you need something to, you know, um, auto offboard them off your platform just because you know indicators um, get stale over time. Um, you could get um, external threat reports. So whether you get like a CISA advisory or like a weekly report from you know from whatever government entity that's that's giving out reports for free, um, whatever roll ups, whatever white papers, newsletters and things like that. You know, if it comes in PDF form, you know, just pump it into the into the platform and have the platform, you know, be able to like, you know, pull out the the, the relevant entities, threat actors, uh, indicators, and save it all. And if you have data sets, um, you know, right, because like the platform is just a shell by itself without any data. Um, if you need, you know, uh, references to your MITRE attack techniques, your CV database, um, you could pull that from GitHub as well. So internal imports, um, uh, it's just like the imports of, of the import of reports um, from your vendors, from your government entities, from partnerships. If CrowdStrike, if Mandiant, if FireEye, if they're sending you, you know, uh, reports about threat actors and things like that, and you want to keep track of it, you know, you don't want it, you know, you know, you don't want to like print it out or whatever, and just like leave it to the side or like file it in their file cabinet. Just put on OpenCTI. It'll be your like, um, it'll be your file cabinet for you. And you know whether it be from a taxi feed or like a newsletter or a white paper, it'd be able to store it. Um, and the way that it would it would essentially work is that um, it'll parse through the PDF, it'll grab you know uh, it'll be able to grab um, uh, all the domains, the URLs, the entities, and be able to save it. So let's take an example, right? Let's say um, let's say. Uh, you got this report, right? CrowdStrike every year, they'll give out for free if you like give them like your name, your house number, your email or stuff, stuff like that. They'll give you um, like a global threat report every year. And usually these, these threat reports, they're rich in nature, you know, they're like 50 pages long, you know, they've got, you know, the CrowdStrike stamp on it, so you, have, you, know, you know that it has to be good. But you don't want your CCI team to like, you know, you don't want them to, you know, they could read it from cover to cover, but, you know, unless they're like taking notes or whatever, you probably want to you probably want to automate this process better, right? So, uh, pr fairly simple. You just like once you get your PDF, uh, you just like upload it to the platform. The platform will have um, it will be constantly waiting for um, waiting for new work, essentially. Uh, once it receives that that upload PDF, which you store it in your S3 buckets or MinIO gateway, um, it'll be able to like uh, parse through the PDF and be able to give you. Um, uh, it'll be able to give you like entities that it found throughout your reports. So the CrowdStrike report um, that I just uploaded um, will give you, you know, this kind of uh, breakdown. And the breakdown could sometimes be, I don't know if it, it doesn't show here, but you know, out of that 52 page reports, you know, there could be, you know, 500 entities, 500 relationships about how entities relate to each other and things like that. Um, uh, you don't want to take CrowdStrike's word for granted and have the platform just like, you know, create your entities and relationships um, in which um, you don't want it to. Like, what if, uh, you know, 
what if you need somebody to hold hold your um, hold its hand and um, walk it through for a little bit? You want to you want to be sure to validate whatever findings that Crosstrek is sending over because after all, you know they're the ones that are um, writing the reports, but you're the ones that are ingesting it, and you don't want your you know your ingestion to be um, you don't want your data set to um, to go bad just because you're ingesting it the wrong way. So OpenCTI, it gives you the functionality of pre-validating anything you ingest into it, whether it be from like a newsletter or a PDF. Um, you know, it'll give you, it'll give, it'll give you some, um, uh, some drop downs and things like that. And you can um, always uh, have the option to, to choose not to import something, ingest something, to choose not to build a relationship between two entities if you do not want to. So, after you ingest something, after it runs through the pre, after you upload something, after you ingest it, um, after you pre-validate it and validate it, um, you'll end up having you know a huge list of um, uh, entities you know typed to their um, entity type, which matches corresponding to their sticks to um, uh, sticks to type. And using your API calls, um, uh, you know. If CrowdStrike tells you, you know, here are five URLs that are known to um, uh, be bad or malicious, you can have your security tools, you know, uh, re, uh, you know, re-verify re the data that CrowdStrike is sending you. Um, you know, upload your your URLs, upload your IPs and domains to VirusTotal. You know, check your sandboxes. Hey, have our um, have our uh, malware analysts, have our reverse engineers seen this before? Um, you know, if so, like let us know, um, and you'd be able to make the communic. You know, you'd be able to have OpenCTI, um, the platform, be able to make the callouts for you um, in order to um, do the enrichment. You can also uh, use like Shodan if you want. Um, you know, look up your uh, your URL, see what Shodan knows about you from um, from the out from its uh, lens and eye and um, and viewpoint, and have it come back with whatever data that um, that it knows that you think is relevant to you. So, for the ingestion, the ingestion portion, um, it's it's mainly catered towards like you know other teams, uh, partners that you have that you work with, um, or like other um, other vend or even even vendors if they want as well. Um, so if you partner with like industry partners or like seg segmented segmented IT teams, you know if they have their own instance of OpenCTI or if they have their um, you know, if they use another vendor product or whatever um, that accepts like um, tax, taxi feed streamings, they could hook up into your, your platform. And if you ever, um, in the event that, you know, in the event that there's like a high level, high severity incident, you need something done quick and you need to be able to give to, um, you know, give a, pr a deliverable, give a presentable um, to your C-suite, to your upper management, in, uh, to your upper management folks, um, you'd be able to like ad hoc on the fly, be able to export everything you know about, you know, an entity or a threat, uh, a threat group, um, a threat actor, a threat tool, um, in order to, you know, write a report about it. And um, the one thing that I want to, um, uh, you know, emphasize is that, you know, you'd be able to like freely share and export um, anything that you have on the platform, as long as it's like on the platform or um, already and without like, you know, well, without limitations. And if you run, run into, you know, if you encounter the, the issue of, you know, uh, uh, of like resource restraints or resource consumption restraints, um, then of course you just like scale out. So after you have, you know, after you have all these streams that are being tapped into your, your platform, you're getting all this data from upstream, um, uh, what, you know, what should your CTI team, what should your CTI team do with it, right? So they could run analysis, right? As, as the, as a threat analyst, um, ideally their, you know, their job description would be to, you know, keep track of emerging threats, keep track of threats that are persistent or have been um, hitting, you know, relevant uh, sectors and um, uh, relevant sectors and, and things like that that might that may be harmful for you, for your organization, for your parent organization, and things like that. Um, you can integrate, um, you know, in the event of you know of a high severity incident, you know, uh, your incident response plan hopefully would would um, there would be a section in it to engage your CTI team to have them threat hunt about any um, any uh, bad actors in your environment. 
uh, a popular thing to do is to use Multigo transforms. So you know you can use Multigo, uh, hook it into your you know hook it into into every environment that your infosec you know every environment that your infosec team uses, um, including OpenCTI to draw the relationships between you know between your sores, your sim, um, and of course your tip now, um, in order to enrich whatever that your CTI team is trying to investigate or threat hunt. And of course, um, at the end, you know, you write a, you can have the option to like write a report to share findings within your community, and you know, on a, you know, on a, uh, on a granular basis, be able to share it as like a data stream um, to your, uh, uh, to whoever is uh, hooked into your platform. And what's most important, um, that is a is a big proponent of the, which is a core functionality of platform, um, which is to visualize your knowledge graph. So this is what like a knowledge graph looks like from a report, right? We have, we have you know we have a ton of clusters. We have a lot of relationships. Um, the clusters, you know, should be pretty easy to tell what a cluster is. And you also have like you know these these long blue lines that connect cluster to cluster, um, and things like that, right? But you know it's way too it's way too complex, um, and so the the platform makes it really easy for you to you know. Uh, uh, adjust the graph, adjust the view of the graph, whether, you know, if you're not like a um, visual thinker or, or visual learner, if you want like the hardcore, you know, the hard facts, the hard IPs, you, um, the, hard, the hard data, you can obviously choose not to use the graph. But zoomed in, we can see that, you know, I don't know if you guys could see, um, but, you know, we have, using color coordination, we have uh, malware um, related to different File, file hashes and things like that, and how different malware relates to other malware, how it, uh, how it references other malware, or how it targets other um, other entities. So you'd be able to zoom in, in and out of the graph and play around with it to see, you know, on the grand on the grand scale, you know, what does CrowdStrike know, you know, from their 2021, you know, global threat report or whatever, and be able to draw a graph from their PDF reports um, to to understand what they're talking about in a visual way. So usage, um, let's run through like a demo use case. Um, let's say um, you want to learn more about like the CACBOT, the QuackBot um, uh, malware, which is like uh, like a banking trojan that targets like financial services companies and things like that in order to like harvest like user credentials and you know um, uh, do malicious things. So you'd look up, you probably just you know go into your platform, you see hey. Like, you know, I want to learn, you know, what has Quackbot done um, so far? So you look it up in your platform and you see what your platform has to say about Quack, Quackbot. Um, you know, all this data, the, the platform itself isn't making it up, but it's getting from upstream from your, um, you know, from your threat intel feeds and things like that and your enrichment. You'd be able to see, you know, um, how often has, Quack, has Quackbots been seen um, by, our, by your partners from upstream? You know, how, how often has it, um, been um, referenced in a report that you have ingested, you know, how often has it been, you know, how many indicators um, has it come from like a, like a, like a threat feed um, that ha has drawn the relationship between that indicator and Quackbots um, and things like that. And you can see like, you know, which vendors are the ones that are, are mainly supplying you the data about what you, um, about what the platform knows about Quackbots. We got a few more, you know, a few more bar graphs, some, some pretty charts um, for you to, you know, enjoy. Um, you can see, you know, which, which, uh, uh, based on the uh, knowledge found on the platform, the platform would be able to graph it, graph it to you um, in a visual way to indicate to you, the, you know, which countries are being targeted by crackbots, which countries are, um, are related to crackbots, um, based on all your findings that you have on the platform. And again, you know, if you choose not to, you know, if you're not a visual visual thinker, if you're not a visual learner, you can always just use, you know, um, plain text in order to figure out um, how Crackbot relates to like any of the other pieces of entities on your platform. But wait, you know, like I said before, I think the first couple words in my uh, in my title of my presentation um, say security automation. So, um, how does security automation um, fit in? 
whether or not your um, you know your team has like a SOAR platform or whatever for for your for your SOC, um, security automation you know fits in very well with with OpenCTI. So you know your SOC can if your SOC identifies like an IOC um, that um, that that they believe um, is malicious, they'll be, have the ability to look it up in OpenCTI and run through you know all the CTI related tasks in order to do, make a determination. Um, if you have a sandbox and your sandbox you know spits out some um, uh, you know, sp spits out some entities that have found some hashes that have found. You wanted to, to, you know, look it up internally on your OpenCTI platform to see what OpenCTI knows about the, um, about your, uh, about your uh, hashes and, and things like that from upstream. Um, if you have a sim, you know, you can, uh, you know, write a custom connection. You could use a custom, you could use an existing connection if they're, um, if someone has written it out already. Um, you know, whatever your sim sees, just look it up in your OpenCTI platform to see, you know, what does OpenCTI know about it. Um, and one cool thing um, that uh, I use day to day is that, like, you know, um, in the events, um, there's like some hot topic, whether it be like solar winds, whether it be like, you know, OTICS, um, whether it be, you know, whatever, uh, uh, log4j or um, spring for shell or whatever, you know, if those keywords appear in the report, if, a, if any of those keywords appear um, uh, from uh, uh, if uh, any new relationships are being created from upstream from uh, from a thread feed on the platform, you want to be sure to you know alert uh, um, alert your your um, alert your security teams like via like Slack or something or like um, uh, Microsoft Teams chat or whatever, and that'd be a pretty cool way to like you know get that 24 by 7 eyes on glass without actually having someone 24 7 eyes on glass you know refreshing um, refreshing the UI of the platform. Oh, whoops. And um, just because I'm like a platform engineer, so I have to like, you know, show this portion, you know, use infrastructure as a code for everything, right? You could use deployment tooling to automate the deployments. If you're on a home lab, you could use like Docker Compose, you could use like Ansible, Puppet Chef, um, things like that. Um, I mainly operate in the cloud, so I'm a huge proponent for like, you know, container technologies like Docker Podman and using Kubernetes in order to orchestrate your deployment. You know, you'd be able to use like, you know, um, cloud technologies in order to make a really robust open source um, straight from the ground up um, cyber threat intelligence platform for like your infosec teams to to utilize um, and of course you know like anything um, implement guardrails in your CI CD pipelines and your deployment pipelines to make sure that you aren't like deploying like bad code bad builds um, and things like that for deployments because you don't want you don't want to purposely you know fat finger something and like you know disrupt your um, your, uh, your your service Cool. So, um, wrapping wrapping it up, you know, if you if if you didn't if you lost um, attention, um, OpenCTI is an open source, community supported um, platform. Um, Boston community they have like a you know a very robust, highly um, highly active Slack chat. Um, many people are um, are on it. Many newcomers are asking questions, and many veterans are are responding back. Um, you know, it's a community supported um, uh, environment. Uh, and made by Lutix. Um, OpenCTI organizes your cyber threat intelligence knowledge. It connects upstream to vendors and feeds um, for your CTI team to like uh, to parse and ingest and correlate on the platform. And, be, and can be connected as like a um, it can be connected downstream to your sims and sores um, in order to um, get to uh, enable alerts and um, and logs. Um, uh, for whoever has that 24-7 twenty four seven eyes on glass SOC team, uh, and OpenCTI can be used um, uh, to track relationships between entities. You know, has crackbots um, targeted France? Has crackbot targeted you know Canada? Um, has it has it targeted has it tar has it targeted like your um, you know your IT organization or whatever um, and things like that. And most importantly, you know, OpenCTI is used to allow your CTI team and allow your infosec teams in order to make good decisions um, using good judgments. So thanks. That's all I have. <laughs> Questions? Hi, uh, great talk. I, I appreciated the narrative structure of the whole thing. You started with a clear description of the problem, and it looks like you've engineered a pretty robust solution for it for your team. Uh, I was curious. You had a lot of different stuff in your tech stack. What were the guiding principles that you kind of followed in making those selections? 
So on um, those selections, um, you you're kind of locked into them. You have to use a lot. You have to use Elasticsearch. You have to use um, you know RabbitMQ. Um, if you choose to, you can you can use their um, uh, publicly built images of the platform and workers and things like that. You also have the op you know you have the options to like you know fork your own or, and and build your own images and things like that. But um, uh, you aren't, you know, if you wanted to, if you choose not to use Elasticsearch, you could use OpenSearch. If you choose not to use MinIO, you could use your own S3 bucket. You could use Google Cloud Storage. You could use Azure, um, Azure Storage as well. Great, thanks. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, so the platform seems really interesting, and it's nice that it's open source. Uh, but it seems to me it's going to be of limited usefulness uh, unless you have the upstream feed. So. What would you suggest for someone who was not in, a, you know, in an enterprise? Um, which, which feeds should they subscribe to, to to sort of play with this, and like how much would that cost? Um, off the top of my head, um, there are you know there are open source um, uh, you know open free to use like reports that you can find on the internet. You can you know always use like you know PDFs. Uh, you can use like let me try to think. I think Alien Vaults. Alien Vault may, might be free. Um, there are definitely some like TLP white sources that you can use um, that pull from upstream. I know Mitre has a Mitre has a good um, good uh, good feed, um, and its connection is already built into OpenCTI um, for you to pull like Mitre reports about threat actors and intrusion sets that Mitre knows about. Um, but other than that, um, you know you can always just you know generate a PDF from from like a from a report, like maybe bleeping computer or something, or um, I don't know what, what another uh, good news source is, but you just pull a PDF. If you, if, you, if you like it, you know, you just pull the PDF and just import it, ingest it into your platform and see what your platform thinks about it. All right, we've got two questions from our matrix chat. So uh, we've got a number of them, but we'll start with two. If you have a threat actor taking actions in your environment and you take action, can you record that in OpenCTI, or do you just have to use a separate ticketing system? Um, so, you know, OpenCTI, unless you explicitly tell it that, hey, like, you know, a threat actor, you know, conducted some kind of, you know, operation against your, 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 you know, your organization's assets, your own personal assets, unless you explicitly tell that to OpenCTI, OpenCTI won't know about it. Um, if you had, like, uh, if you integrate it with, like, your SOAR or SIM, um, you know, obviously if you get on a security alert and a security alert tells you that, you know, some, some tool is, is, was was used in the past like you know you know hour um, to hit like you know one of your systems you know OpenCTI would be smart enough to be able to draw the relationships and say like hey we've seen this hash before we've seen the we've seen uh, this like uh, signature before and it's been you know and record a future or like CrowdStrike or MITRE um, attributes this hash um, to this threat actor like hey like you might be in some deep trouble. But other than that, like, you know, unless you explicitly tell OpenCTI, like, hey, like, I've been hit by, you know, the FSB or, like, by an APT group or whatever, um, OpenCTI wouldn't be smart enough in order to, like, um, make that decision, that determination for you. But you can. All right. And last question, I think. Have you done sharing with industry partners? And what challenges have you faced in doing so? Um, so definitely, I think, um, generally, like, people... People don't like unsolicited, I don't know, people outside of your organization or like people that you don't work with day to day, they might not be uh, receptive of, of like unsolicited data. Like they don't care about like, you know, what's happening in, in, in your neck of the woods or whatever. Um, but I think that um, because, you know, CTI, um, the whole industry of like counter threat intelligence is all about like information sharing. Sometimes like, you know, uh, someone s says something um, and it's listened and it's heard by someone else and that person quotes the original author and someone quotes the original the, the author that that quoted the original author you get like this loop um, so that's not always good um, but um, definitely um, I think one of the big proponents of like cyber threat intelligence is just like you know just be open be able to like share amongst like those you trust um, and if they if, you know if they want it they can have it but if they don't want it you know it's the door's always open for them to connect Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for the wonderful talk, and thank you for the audience for participating.
and come back in 10 minutes for their next talk, Electronic Warfare on a Budget of $15 or Less.